can I ask him a question? Sure. I don't believe a word you say. That's not a question. <laughs> Yo, what's good YouTube? Welcome back to Grim. Today we are going to cover a real life occurrence of one of the oldest scams in the book. And before I get into it guys, if you hear beeping outside, I'm sorry, I don't know about you guys, but I'm currently having a snowpocalypse in my area and there are a bunch of just construction vehicles trying to get snow off the road outside, so that's what that is. But I guess in the entirety of scams in general, this scam is not that old, but in terms of internet scamming, it has been around since the very beginning. You know those phishing emails that old people always fall for that claim to be some Nigerian prince that needs $2,000 via wire transfer? Well, yeah, they always claim to give you your money back and then some, but obviously to anyone familiar with internet scams, that has to be one of the most sketchy and obviously fake things that you could ever read. And normal people probably wouldn't fall for it, but those uninitiated or older people that aren't as familiar with these scams fall for them all the time, unfortunately. And like I said earlier, the lady we are covering today has fallen for that same scam, but not where she was told directly to send money, but instead has been tricked into thinking she has some sort of a serious romantic relationship with this man in Nigeria. Let's see who we're dealing with today. I am 64 years old and my fiance is 34 years old. My fiance Victor lives in Nigeria. No, I love you baby. So guys, apart from the glaring issue of her being across the world from this guy and never having met him in real life, which I guess could be looked past as, I mean, long distance relationships are a thing and I guess I can't really judge on that part. Love is love, right? So you have to also note though that there is a 30 year age difference between these two, which is extremely uncommon to say the least. I started talking to Victor on Facebook. Victor was living with scammers in Malaysia but he did not want to live that life. He wanted to leave, so I paid $800 for the ticket. So Victor flew to Nigeria. Now, I speak to Victor every day. So this woman claims that he admitted that he was living with scammers in Malaysia, which should be red flag number one. I mean, he's living with scammers, supposedly, so obviously he would have picked up on the best scamming tactics and be capable of scamming people. And she paid for a flight for him to go back to Nigeria from Malaysia which was $800. You guys wanna know what I think? I bet this dude had never even lived in Malaysia and just wanted her to send him that money so he could fake a plane ticket and enjoy his riches. Victor has not asked me for money, but I have sent him $75 here, $75 there. Altogether, I have spent about $5,000. Okay, so when she started saying, you know, I've sent him $75 here, $75 there, I was expecting her to say, oh, so in total I've spent around a few hundred dollars. Not $5,000. That is more than 75 here and 75 there, I'd say. And you could tell she's kind of embarrassed at how much she has sent to him and phrases it in that way to kind of belittle truly how much money she has actually sent him. So here she starts to say all the things that they have in common to justify why she thinks this relationship is real. And guys, they are some of the most generic things that I have ever heard. She clearly knows very little about this guy throughout all of their conversation and that shows. She says, he likes cooking and so do I. He's a musician and so do I, and we pray together. Those are seriously so surface level and just another indicator that she is getting finessed by this guy. I call him my African king and he calls me either his tomato or fat fish. <laughs> Okay, I have to admit, this is kind of messed up, but this part actually did crack me up quite a bit. She's calling this guy a king, and he gives her the nickname Fat Fish? <laughs> this guy's a real piece of trash if he's not only scamming this poor old lady, but also refers to her as Fat Fish when she thinks the world of him. Screw this guy, honestly. Victor has asked me to marry him, and I've already bought the ticket to go to Nigeria in February. I plan to spend 14 days in Nigeria. Okay guys, if she had already bought the plane ticket, it's probably too late, but there will most likely be nothing good to come from this. You'll find out later on in the video why I say that, but yeah, she will most likely face some great danger if she actually flies out to meet him. So this fiance of hers, Victor, wants to prove to the world that he is not a scammer. So unannounced, Dr. Phil sends out a journalist of theirs that lives in Nigeria to go and pay this guy a visit. First off, I hate to even point this out, guys, as it distracts us from the point of the video, but oh my god, is this some of the most terrible, overexposed footage of all time? Come on, cameraman. So this guy goes and spends about four to five hours at Victor's village, getting a tour of his house and meeting not only him, but his neighbors as well. One peculiar thing that I noticed that they didn't even point out in the video is while all of his neighbors confirm that he is a great guy all around and doesn't live with anyone else and is single, 
They all claim that they have known him for about a year, even though according to him and this woman, he just moved here a few months ago since he was living with those scammers in Malaysia and didn't want to live that life. So that is pretty suspect, in my opinion. It's pretty clear that this guy isn't living a lavish life by any means. He doesn't even have electricity for most of the day, so whatever money she's sending him isn't going to fancy cars or anything like that. It's most likely for him to live. Still, he doesn't need to be scamming old ladies, so he doesn't get much sympathy from me. And his neighbors can praise him all they want, but if they know what he is up to, they honestly could be scammers as well, or at least in on it. So their praise doesn't give much credibility unless they have proof of what they say. All of their claims of him being a good guy were pretty surface level too. So here's where things get a little weird. <laughs> Dr. Phil whips out the old iPad and starts actually FaceTiming with Victor. And of course, he starts asking him questions about his supposed backstory and asks about his past scamming women in Malaysia. He admits to the scamming and when Dr. Phil asks one more time to confirm, he all of a sudden switches up his story saying, Oh no, I've never scammed women, that's not my personality to scam. When literally he has said the exact opposite multiple times already. The last time being about 30 seconds ago in this conversation. This dude is confusing and I honestly think he's just losing track of what lies he's said in the past. The experience that I have with Josie is all about true love. So my attention towards her is for me to make her happy and to be with her for the rest of my life. Because I love her with all my heart. So I'm just going to cut this off. Of course, he, he continues on and changes the subject and starts talking about how much he loves this woman and wants to be with her which moves her to tears because she is obviously taking everything to heart, but doesn't understand that he has done this before and probably will with multiple people in the future, so he knows exactly what to say to keep them ensnared. When Dr. Phil asks his plan for marriage and how it's gonna go down, he says this. Uh, it's not that safe for her, so if I, I would like, if, if, if it has got make it possible for, for me to come and live with, with her in the United States to have a better life, to be there for her, because she's a good woman and she deserves to be happy. So apparently, even though she's bought her ticket, now it's not safe for her to go to his village. So instead, he wants to move to her in America and marry her to get a green card. And that's where alarms start going off in everyone's heads and the real scam begins to show its face. This guy is obviously scamming money out of this woman and probably be multiple others, but the real goal for him is most likely to get a green card out of their marriage and then leave her in the dust. Think of it as a get citizenship quick scheme. And this type of scam has been around for a very long time as well, with both men and women doing it from just about every country you can imagine. I mean, all you have to do is convince some poor lonely person from America that you love them and want to spend your life with them. And once they allow you to marry them, you are in the clear and can live in America. Wow, that's the goal at least. Real quick guys, before we continue, make sure to subscribe and leave a like right now, as well as hit that bell to join our notification squad so you never miss a video when we upload. If you guys have subbed with notifications on, comment notifications on and I'll reply to as many of you as I can saying thanks. So then Dr. Phil shifts the interview over to the journalist that you guys saw earlier. He was the one that went to the village and talked to Victor and his neighbors. And he confirms that, yeah, pretty much he is sure that this guy is just looking for a way to get a green card. But as he says, you can never be 100% sure. When Dr. Phil asks this guy what would happen to her if she went over there to get married, he says this. She's going to Victor's home. She, she will likely maybe kidnapped because it's, it's a very common occurrence. It's not advisable to go to his village. No, it's not. I will not advise that. So guys, that's why I was saying earlier that even if this is real and she gets a flight over there, there is possibly a much larger risk at hand, as she could be like kidnapped and possibly taken for ransom or even worse. I mean, if the guy that lives and works in Nigeria tells you not to come here and risk your life, you should probably listen to him. Unfortunately, he has probably heard of this exact same situation before and it obviously ended badly for the person on the other end of the world that came here and got kidnapped. So guys, my favorite and absolute funniest part of this video, in my opinion, is when the woman across from our scam victim speaks for the first time in the whole show. She is a family member of this woman and worried for her daughter, I'm guessing she's like the mother or something, and well, listen to this. Dr. Phil, can I ask him a question? Sure. I don't believe a word you say. That's not a question. <laughs> <laughs> Something about that just cracks me up so much. Her being so polite and asking if she could ask him a question and then just ragging on the dude is hilarious. Yeah, lady, that's not a question, but I'm glad you said what's on everyone's minds. <laughs> so to wrap this all up, guys, Dr. Phil and the correspondent that interviewed Victor both confirmed that they believe this guy to wholeheartedly be scamming this woman. 
and he recommends that she ends the relationship quickly. Obviously, not only does this make the woman very sad, as her only companion for about a year now has just been revealed to be faking it for money and citizenship, but she also realizes now just how dumb it was to be sending him all that money in the past. Luckily, this has a wholesome ending as Dr. Phil offers to personally advise her on anyone she might date in the future and tells her, if you date anyone from here on out, call Uncle Phil and I'll make sure he's legit. <laughs> so luckily, she has that to look forward to in case she somehow gets scammed again. All in all, I wish the best for this woman and hope that nobody else falls victim to this guy's scams ever again. So as always, guys, let me know what you thought of this story or if you know anyone that's been scammed like this in the past, as it is pretty common and sadly, like I said, people fall for it all the time. I'll see you guys in the next video very shortly. Peace out.